Unit thirty nine. An evening out. Shall we go out tonight? Okay. Let's go to a restaurant. Which one? How about the flamenco? The flamenco. Which one's that? Did you remember? That's the one that serves seafood. Oh yes. Oh, look over there. Where? In the corner. It's Jack West, isn't it? Where? I can't see him. There. He's the one that's wearing a black suit. Oh, the one that's talking so loudly. What about him? He used to be at college with us. He was the only one that didn't pass the exams. Hmm. He looks very successful. What does he do now? Nothing. He doesn't have to work. Why not? Well, you remember, don't you? He married Patty Hetty. Patty Hetty? Yes, the girl that inherited a fortune. Her father was a millionaire. Ah, yes. Isn't she the one that killed herself? Yeah, that's right. And he got all the money. Unit forty. I've been waiting. Hello, Miss Wright. Is the boss in? Yes, Chris. He is. He's in his office and he's waiting for you. Oh, what time did he arrive? He arrived at twenty to ten. Twenty to ten. So he's been waiting for twenty minutes. Hello, Judy. You've been sitting here for an hour. Where's your husband? Oh, he's dancing with Mrs. Winston. Oh yes, he's dancing very well. Has he been dancing all evening? Yes, he has, but he hasn't been dancing with me. Hello, Mrs. Parker. Are you waiting to see Doctor Savage? Hello, Mrs. Baker. Yes, I am. How long have you been waiting? I've been waiting since nine o'clock. Ah, so you haven't been waiting long. It's only ten past nine now. No, no, I haven't. I've been reading this magazine. It's very interesting. There's an article about operation. Eric, call the waiter again. I've been trying to call him. Eric, we've been sitting here for twenty minutes, and I'm not going to wait any longer. I'm sorry, dear, but he's talking to that girl. Yes, he's been talking to her since we came in. Waiter. Yes, sir. Do you want the bill? The bill. We haven't seen the menu yet. Unit forty-one, a court case. A few months ago, there was a bank robbery in Stanford. The police arrested a man and a woman. They're in court now. A woman saw the robbery. She's standing in the witness box. The judge and the twelve members of the jury are listening to her. A lawyer is asking her some questions. Now, Miss Dixter, you saw the bank robbery, didn't you? Yes, I did. You saw a man, didn't you? That's right. I saw him when he went into the bank and when he came out. Now look around the court. Can you see that man? Yes, he's the man I saw. He wasn't alone when he went into the bank, was he? No, he was with a woman. Now look around the court again. Can you see that woman? Yes, there. She's the woman I saw. I see, Miss Dexter. Now look at the man and woman again. This is very important. Are you absolutely sure about them? Absolutely sure. They're the people I saw. Now, Miss Dexter, what was the man wearing when he went into the bank? I don't remember everything, but I remember his hat and his bag. Look at the hat on the table. Is that the hat? Yes, that's the hat he was wearing. And the bag? Yes, that's the bag he was carrying. Do you remember anything about the woman? Yes, she was wearing a blonde wig, 
and black platform shoes. How do you know it was a wig, Miss Dexter? Because it fell off when she was running to the car. Look at the wig on the table. Is that the wig? Yes, that's the wig she was wearing. And the shoes. Look at the shoes. Yes, they're the shoes she was wearing. Thank you, Miss Dexter. Unit 42. The Empty Chair. A friend of mine, Rob Jenkins, almost had a nervous breakdown last year. I told him to go to the doctor. Hello, Mr. Jenkins. What can I do for you? Well, Doctor, I'm very tense and nervous. I haven't been able to sleep for several days. Mm. Have you been working hard? Oh, yes. I've been very busy. I've been working 12 hours a day. Have you been taking any pills? No, but I've been smoking too much and I've been drinking a lot of coffee. Well, you should take a holiday. You should go somewhere quiet and peaceful. Like Cornwall. Why don't you go there? Rob decided to go to Cornwall the next weekend. Penkey was a very small fishing village on the north coast of Cornwall. There were no trains or buses to Penkey, so he had to drive. It was a long journey and Rob arrived late on Friday evening. The landlady of the guest house, Mrs. Doon, answered the door and showed him to his room. Rob was very tired and went straight to bed. He slept well and didn't wake up until nine o'clock the next morning. Rob went downstairs for breakfast. Because there were no other guests, Mrs. Doon invited him to have breakfast with her and her daughter, Catherine. Catherine was already sitting in the dining room. She was about 13 years old with long black hair and clear grey eyes. Mrs. Doon went to the kitchen to prepare breakfast. Rob and Catherine looked at each other nervously for a few seconds. There are four places at the table. Is there another guest? Oh, no. We never talk about the empty place. The empty place? What do you mean? Well, that used to be my father's place. Used to be? I don't understand. My father was a fisherman. Three years ago he went out in his boat and he never returned. What happened to him? Nobody knows. They searched everywhere but they found nothing. My mother always keeps that place for him. And she makes his breakfast every morning. She thinks he'll come back. That's a photograph of him over there on the wall. My mother's been waiting for him for three years. Rob said nothing, but he looked very worried. At that moment, Mrs. Doon returned. She poured four cups of tea and put one cup in the empty place. Rob looked more worried and he stared at the empty chair. Suddenly, he heard footsteps outside the door, and a tall man with a black beard walked into the room. Rob looked terrified. It was the man in the photograph. He jumped up and ran out of the room. Who was that? What's the matter? I don't know. I don't understand. He's a guest from London. He arrived last night while you were asleep. Catherine? Do you know anything about this? No, I don't, Father. But he's here because he's very nervous. He says he's hiding here because a tall man with a black beard is trying to kill him. Catherine, have you been telling stories again? Stories, Father? Me? <laughs> Unit 43. How long? How much? Come in. You're Mr. Carson, aren't you? Please sit down. Thank you. What can I do for you, Mr. Carson? Well, I want to borrow some money. What for? I want to buy a car. I've been saving for two years. Ah. How much have you saved? I've saved about a thousand pounds. What are you reading? The Godfather. It's about the Mafia in America. John told me to read it. 
Oh, it's a very long book. I know. I've been reading it for a month and I haven't finished it yet. How many pages have you read? About 400. I don't like long books. <laughs> Neither do I. Petrol, sir? Uh, please, fill it up. Which bride? Four star. It's nearly empty. I've been driving all day. Oh, how far have you driven? Oh, about 400 miles. I've driven from Scotland. Oh, that's a long way. Shall I check the oil and water? Please. Hello, Jenny. You still working? It's time for lunch. I know, but I haven't finished these letters yet. They're important. Mr. Power wants them this afternoon. How long have you been typing? Since nine o'clock. I didn't stop for coffee. How many have you done? Well, most of them. There are only two left. Well, do them after lunch. No, I'll do them now. OK. See you this afternoon. Unit 44. Look. Nick Owen is a guide for Britannia Tours. Some new tourists have just arrived in Exmouth. He's showing them around the town. I'm sure you'll enjoy your stay here. There's the beach that's the safest for swimmers. The other beaches aren't as good. And that's the shop that sells picnic lunches. Over there's the shop that sells souvenirs. I'll meet you back here at four o'clock. Paul's showing Angela some holiday photos. Look, mm. this is the hotel I stayed in. Oh. And here's the restaurant I used to go to. Mm. I used to eat there every day. <laughs> this is the beach we used to lie on. It was a marvellous holiday. Mm. Anne's just had an accident. She's telling a policeman about it. The car in front of me stopped suddenly. I managed to stop, but the van behind me didn't. It hit my car and pushed it into the car in front. There's my car. There's the van that hit my car. And that's the car my car hit. Paul's showing Angela an old school photo. The headmaster's in the middle. He's the one that taught us Latin. His lessons were very boring. The fat one on the left is mm. Mr. Bunter. <laughs> He's the one that used to hit us with a cane. Mr. Cherry's on the right. Mm. He's the one that taught us French and football. Ooh. I was never bored in his lessons. <laughs> this is a picture of Ronald Rigg. He's the man the police arrested yesterday. He's standing next to P.C. Martin. Martin's the policeman that caught him. Unit 46. Booking in advance. Hello, Old England Restaurant. Can I help you? Yes, I'd like to book a table for tonight. Yes, sir. What time? Eight o'clock. Certainly, sir. For how many people? There are ten of us. Ten of you? We don't usually accept large parties, sir. I know, but we are regular customers. What's your name, please, sir? Richard Burton. Mr. Burton. Of course that'll be all right. We'll put two tables together. I'd like two seats for the concert on Thursday evening. Yes, where would you like to sit? I'm not sure. Well, here's a seating plan of the concert hall. How much is it in the middle? Uh, six pounds. Six pounds. That's a little too expensive for us. How much is it there, at the back? Two pounds. That's fine. What time does the concert start? At half past seven, sir. Have you got any seats left for the Stratford excursion? Yes, sir. There are a few seats left. Is that the one that goes to Oxford as well? That's right. How long does the whole excursion take? Approximately ten hours, sir. Shall I 
pay you now? If you don't mind, sir. Good morning, unisex hairdressers. Good morning. I'd like to make an appointment, please, at three o'clock this afternoon with Marcel. Let me see. I'm afraid Marcel's busy at three, madam. Oh dear, Marcel always does my hair. I'm sorry, madam. Well, how about four o'clock? I'm terribly sorry, madam. Marcel's busy all afternoon. Oh, what a nuisance! I'm very, very sorry, madam, but you should always book well in advance. Unit 47. A new job. Alice, have you seen this ad in the paper? Oh, yes. But I'm not interested in finding a new job. I've been here since I left school. I like working here. Really? I've only been here for two months and I'm already tired of doing the same thing every day. I want some adventure. Adventure? There's too much adventure in New York. People are afraid of walking in the street. Oh, come on. It's not that bad. And the salaries are fantastic. Well, I'm not interested in earning more money. I've got enough now. Oh, yes, but you live at home with your parents. But I like living with my parents. What's wrong with that? Oh, nothing. But I like being independent. I like travelling. I enjoy meeting new people. I'm going to apply for the job. Well, good luck. Unit 48. The weather forecast. Paul and Judy live in Birmingham. It's a large city in the Midlands. They're planning a weekend holiday. I know, Judy. Why don't we go to Scotland? It's a very long way. Oh, it isn't too far. Anyway, the motorway is very good, so we can get there quickly. But Scotland's often cold at this time of the year. It may snow. Well, yes, it may. But I don't think it will. Oh, I'm not sure. It is February, and I'm frightened of driving in snow. And we may not be able to find a hotel. They may be closed. Oh, that's no problem. I can book a hotel by phone. Well, perhaps it's not a bad idea. We may have beautiful weather. Oh, we'll enjoy ourselves anyway. Let's watch the weather forecast on television. We may not go to Scotland. We may go to Wales or London. We can decide off the forecast. Good evening, and here is the weather forecast for tomorrow. Northern Scotland will be cold, and there may be snow over high ground. In the north of England, it will be a wet day, and rain may move into Wales and the Midlands during the afternoon. East Anglia will be generally dry, but it will be dull and cloudy. In southern England it will be a bright, clear day with sunshine, but it may rain during the evening. In the southwest it may be foggy during the morning, but the afternoon will be clear. It may be windy later in the day. Unit 49. A restaurant kitchen. Hurry up, Chef. The customers have been waiting for ten minutes. They're hungry and they're getting angry. I know, I know, but I've only got one pair of hands. <laughs> You'll have to help me. Help you? That's not my job. I'm a waitress, not a cook. Well, both of my assistants are off work. Mm, right. What shall I do first? Well, start putting the meat on the plates and I'll prepare the vegetables. Okay. Is that enough meat? Uh, uh, oh, that's a bit too much. Uh, take a bit off. What about potatoes? Oh, put on plenty of potatoes. They're cheap. And lots of peas. All right, all right. Can I take them now? Have you put the sauce on yet? Eh? Oh, no, I haven't. Well, where is it? Oh, here it is. <clears throat> oh, there isn't quite enough sauce here. There's plenty in that pan over there. Oh, yes. I've got it. Fine. Now you can begin taking the plates for the customers. Ow! They're hot! Well, use a cloth! 
And don't carry too many plates. You may drop them. No, I won't drop them. I've never dropped a plate in my life. Unit 50, asking for directions. Excuse me. Yes? I'm looking for the men's clothes department. Ah, yes, sir. It's on the fourth floor. The lift's over there. Uh, thank you, but I'll use the stairs. I need the exercise. Good morning. Can I help you? Yes, I've got an appointment with Mrs. Truman, the sales manager. What time is your appointment, sir? Half past eleven. Right. Go up those stairs to the first floor. Take the corridor on the left. Mrs. Truman's office is the third door on the right. You can't miss it. Thank you. Oh, sir? Yes? Don't bother to knock. Go straight in. She's expecting you. Excuse me? Yes? I'm lost. Is this the way to Brighton? No, uh, I'm afraid it isn't. You're going the wrong way. This is the Portsmouth Road. Oh, dear. Can you tell me the way to Brighton? Yes. Um, turn round and go back to the roundabout. Take the third exit. That's the A272. The A272? That's right. You'll see signposts to Brighton from there. Yes, please. Two to Market Street, please. 36B. Can you tell me when we get there? OK. Thanks a lot. Unit 51, Air Sea Rescue. This is the Radio 1 News Desk. In Dorset, a helicopter is trying to rescue a man who has fallen down a cliff. He's lying on a small beach. An air-sea rescue helicopter has arrived at the scene and one of the crew has climbed down a ladder to the beach. He's speaking to a doctor by radio. Hello? Can you hear me, doctor? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Is he unconscious? No. He's conscious, but he looks pretty bad. OK. Ask him if he can move. Can you move? No. Ask him if he's in pain. Are you in pain? Oh, yes. Ask him where it hurts. Where does it hurt? It's my back. Right. Don't move him. I'm coming down. Frank Aitken is the editor of the Daily News. He's sending a trainee journalist to interview the American singer, Bob Sonata. Now, I've arranged the interview for four o'clock mm -hmm. at his hotel. Mm -hmm. Ask him lots of questions, you know, ask him if he likes England, mm -hmm. ask him what his next record will be, when he recorded it, mm -hmm. and ask him where. Ask him all the usual questions, yeah. but don't. Don't ask him how old he is, OK? Unit 52, UFO. Ronald and Jean were driving along a quiet country road in southern England. They were on the way to Westbury. It was nearly midnight. Ron, look over there. There's something in the sky. What is it? I don't know what it is. It's probably a plane. I don't think so. It's too big and too bright. Oh, no. What's the matter? Well, the engine stopped. Why has it stopped? I don't know why it stopped. We'll have to find a garage. Is there one near here? Yes. There's one in the next village, but I don't know if it's open. It's very late. 
Suddenly there was a loud noise, and a big bright silver object flew low over their car. It stopped in mid-air, turned round, and flew back over their car. Then it went straight up into the sky and disappeared. Eh? Don't ask me. I've got no idea what it was. Oh, I'm frightened. Let's go. We can't. The engine isn't working. Oh, try it again. Well, that's strange. It's okay now. I wonder why it wasn't working. Oh, Ron. Do you think it was a UFO? I don't know. I really don't. We should phone the police. Ron. Do you think they'll believe us? Unit 54, a mugging. One night, Mrs. Riley, an elderly widow, was walking along a dark London street. She was carrying her handbag in one hand and a plastic carrier bag in the other. There was nobody else in the street except two youths. They were standing in a dark shop doorway. One of them was very tall with fair hair. The other was short and fat with a beard and moustache. The youths waited for a few moments and then ran quickly and quietly towards Mrs. Riley. The tall youth held her from behind while the other youth tried to snatch her handbag. Suddenly, Mrs. Riley threw the tall youth over her shoulder. He crashed into the other youth, and they both landed on the ground. Without speaking, Mrs. Riley struck both of them on the head with her handbag and walked calmly away. The two surprised youths were still sitting on the ground when Mrs. Riley crossed the street towards a door with a lighted sign above it. Mrs. Riley paused, turned round, smiled at the youths, and walked into the South West London Judo Club. Unit 55. An Important Visitor. The platform of Portsbridge Station is full of people. They're waiting for an important visitor, the Queen. They're expecting her to arrive soon. She's going to open a new secondary school, Portsbridge Comprehensive. The Mayor's Secretary is telling him about the plans for the day. She'll be here soon. We'll wait until we see the train. When the train stops, the band will start playing. Your son will give her some flowers when she gets off the train. You'll make a speech before she leaves the station. As soon as she arrives at the school, the children will begin cheering. After she opens the school, we'll go to the town hall. When she gets to the town hall, you'll make another speech. After you make the speech, we'll have lunch. Before she leaves Portsbridge, you'll give her a present from the town. Unit 56, General Hospital. Mr. Wallace is in the maternity ward. His wife's going to have a baby. Hello. You're Mr. Wallace, aren't you? Have you been waiting long? Not really. Is there any news? Not yet. We'll tell you as soon as there is. Have you thought of any names for the baby? Oh, yes. If it's a girl, we'll call her Victoria. Mm -hmm. If it's a boy, we'll call him Jason. Oh. David Foster has had a serious accident. His wife's outside the operating theatre now. Mrs. Foster, I'm Dr. Payne. Oh, Doctor, how is he? Well, I'm afraid we'll have to operate. Oh, no. He's always been afraid of operations. Don't worry. If we operate now, he'll be all right. Oh, Doctor, do you really have to? I'm afraid so. He's lost a lot of blood. If we don't operate, he'll die. 
Mr. Frampton has just arrived at the hospital. He's going to have a minor operation tomorrow. This is your bed, Mr. Frampton. Oh, thank you, sister. Now, could you get undressed and get into bed? There's a buzzer on the bedside table. If you press the button, someone will come at once. Oh, uh, I'm sure I won't need anything. Well, don't forget. If you need anything, just press the button. Oh, dear. How did this happen? He was just playing with the saucepan. Mm -hmm. And he put it on his head and... Now it's stuck. Have you tried to get it off? No, I'm afraid of hurting him. Yes, if we pull too hard, we'll hurt him. What are you going to do? Well, if I don't get it off, he won't be able to eat. Oh, no! <laughs> I'm only joking. Um, if I put some soap on his head, it'll come off easily. Unit 57. At the races. Horse racing is a very popular sport in Britain. There are over 11,000 horses in training and there's a race meeting almost every day of the year. Some of the prizes are worth thousands of pounds and some of the horses are worth millions. Horses from all over the world enter for the big races. People bet on the horses and if they're lucky they can win a lot of money. Some people spend a lot of time studying the form of the horses. Others just guess. Look at the list of horses for the Hampshire Gold Cup. Study it and try to choose the winner. It's a lovely day here at Hurstwood Park. The horses are ready for today's big race, the Hampshire Gold Cup. And they're off. They've all started well. They're racing towards the first bend and Dobbins in the lead, Concord second and Chestnut Mares third. Now they're approaching the first fence and Dobbins fallen, but the jockey looks all right. And now Concord's in front. White Rum, the favourite, is at the back. Now they're entering the second bend and they're all over the second fence. Cash Register has just passed Concord and Sylvester Stallion has moved into third place. Then Irish Prince, then Tricky Dicky. Now they're coming round the third bend, and it's a very close race. And they've all jumped the third fence. And the favourite White Rum is coming through. The crowd is cheering wildly. They're over the last fence. There's only 300 metres to go. And all the horses are in a line. I can't see which one's in front. It's very, very close. It's a photo finish. What a race. But we'll have to wait for the result. And here's the result of the Hampshire Gold Cup. First, number two, Irish Prince. Second, number four, White, White Rock. Third, number five, Kentucky Moon. Unit 58. On the road. Ben, you can't park here. There's a double yellow line. Oh, we'll be back in a few minutes. It's OK. Oh, no, it isn't. You'll get a parking ticket if you leave it here. No, I won't. It's half past five. All the traffic wardens have gone home. Ben. Yes? Is this your car, sir? Excuse me, may I see your licence? I'm afraid I've left it at home. In that case, you'll have to take it to the police station within five days. But... but why? You were speeding, sir. But I was only doing 35. There's a 30 miles an hour speed limit on this road, sir. Is there? I didn't see the sign. Well, sir, we've been following you. So you were doing 35 too? No, sir, we were doing 60 miles an hour. And we couldn't catch you. Wadley's Garage. Oh, good evening. I don't know if you can help me. My car's broken down. We have a 24-hour breakdown service. Where are you? I'm on the A357, just north of Ringbourne. My car's just past the Red Lion pub. It's a white MG. 
Do you know what's wrong with it? I've got no idea, but it won't start. I'll send a mechanic out to you. He'll be there in about ten minutes. It's nothing serious, sir. You've run out of petrol. Oh. Can you tow me to the garage? Oh, that's not necessary. I've got a spare can of petrol in my truck. Shall I pay you now, or shall I come to the garage? You can pay me now. Will you take a check? I've run out of cash, too. Yes, that's OK. Hold on. I can't find my checkbook. Unit 60. Emergency. 999. Emergency. Which service, please? Police. Police here. I've just seen two cars crash into a security van. I think it's a robbery. Where? Just outside the factory gates. Which factory, sir? Croxley Engineering. In Brook Lane. The first police car got to the factory three minutes later, but it was too late. The robbers had gone. They had knocked out one of the security guards and shot the other. They were both lying on the ground near the van. The thieves had taken all the wages for the factory. The police called an ambulance and questioned three people who had seen the robbery. Which service, please? Fire. Fire service. Come quickly. Fenley's garage is on fire. The one in Churchill Road. We'll be there in two minutes. The fire engine got to the garage just in time. The showroom was burning. Fortunately, the fire hadn't reached the petrol pumps and hadn't spread to neighbouring houses. The firemen were able to put it out quickly. The fire had started in the office. Someone had thrown a lighted cigarette into a waste paper basket. Emergency. Which service, please? Ambulance. Ambulance service. Hurry. There's a boy. He's in the canal, and I don't think he can swim. Where are you, madam? Oh, oh, sorry. Um, near the bridge. Uh, the one in Balaclava Street. We're on our way. When the ambulance arrived, the boy was lying on the quay. A policeman had seen the boy in the water and had dived in and rescued him. The boy was all right. The policeman had given him artificial respiration. The ambulance took the boy and the policeman to hospital. Unit 61. Reader's Letters. Have you ever had an embarrassing experience? Last week we asked readers to tell us about embarrassing experiences. We received hundreds of letters. Here is a selection. My most embarrassing experience happened when I had just left university. I had just started teaching in a Liverpool secondary school. One morning, my alarm clock didn't ring. I had forgotten to wind it up. I woke up at half past eight, and school began at nine. I quickly washed, shaved, dressed, jumped into my car, and drove to school. When I arrived, the students had already gone into class. I didn't go to the staff room, but went straight into class. After two or three minutes, the students began laughing, and I couldn't understand why. Suddenly, I looked down and understood. I had put on one black shoe and one brown shoe. Stanley Hooper, B.A., Preston, Lancashire. The most embarrassing experience I've ever had happened two years ago. My wife and I had driven into town to do some shopping. The streets were very busy and we were holding hands. Suddenly, my wife saw a dress that she liked in a shop window and stopped. I started looking at some radios in the next window. After a minute or two, I reached for my wife's hand. There was a loud scream and a woman slapped my face. 
I hadn't taken my wife's hand. I'd taken the hand of a complete stranger. Len Bailey, Sheffield, Yorks. My husband and I had decided to buy a new house, and I'd made an appointment to see our bank manager. I'd never met him before, and I was a bit nervous. I drove into town, and I was lucky enough to find a parking space outside the bank. I just started reversing into the space when another car drove into it. I was furious. I opened my window and shouted at the other driver. He ignored me and walked away. It took me twenty minutes to find another space. As soon as I'd parked the car, I rushed back to the bank. I was ten minutes late for my interview. I went to the manager's office, knocked, and walked in. The manager was sitting behind his desk. He was the man who had taken my parking space. Kate Kirby, Portsmouth, Hants. Why don't you write and tell us about your most embarrassing experience?